Hey, what's going on summoners? My name is Nathan Ng, and today we'll be taking a look at the best two worst roles to carry with. While we'd love to say every role is equally balanced, it's unfortunately not the case. More often than not, the power to carry varies by rank for each role, but we'll be taking an average look at them overall. In this video, we'll be covering each role, how strong they are, and why they carry so well. Anyway, let's not waste any more time and dive right into the video. Starting us off strong, we've got Jungle as the best carry role in the game. This honestly is to no one's surprise. For years, Jungle has held its spot as the best to carry with nearly every game and it's for good reason. Junglers are powerful since they're able to secure objectives for their team and impact each and every lane. While every laner has one jungler to play around and rely on, the jungler has three different lanes that they can work with. As a jungler, you're able to use your power to secure objectives to get your allies ahead. Being able to get Herald early on allows for a massive snowball for whatever lane you place it in. Using it before plates allows you and your ally to get a ton of gold while not losing much of anything. On top of this, they can use the second Herald to open up the map by breaking the outer turret. If you have somebody like a Caitlyn bot lane, you can break the turret with Herald, so that way they can go ahead and impact the map with the turret taking power. If you need to get Irelia out of the lane against Orn, so she can go ahead and help out, you can break the turret with ease thanks to Herald. Then, we also have the fact that Dragon exists. While they're not as powerful as they've been in the past, yes, we're looking at you, Chemtech Drake, they're still strong. Junglers are able to use Dragons to secure the team in late game win condition. Plus, some of the Dragon benefits are really good in certain lanes. Picking up an early Ocean Dragon works wonders when facing a poke lane. If you get an Infernal Drake, you get a decent boost in your damage to snowball your Samara and Rel lane. Alongside their team buff, they can also grant gold and stack your legend runes with, and as an ADC, it's always nice to have. Overall, objective control is extremely important and junglers are the prime candidates for the job. Don't worry, that's not the end of this section. We all know why you'd rank junglers as a strong role too. Their ability to impact each and every lane is game changing and really annoying from a laner's point of view. If you get a lead and start holding a freeze, a jungler can come and break it and walk the wave in. If you're dominating your lane and trying to take plates, the jungler can just show up for a gank and punish you. If you're letting the wave slow push into you for free CS, the jungler can coordinate a dive to set you behind. The possibilities that junglers have to impact the map are endless and is one of the primary reasons behind their strength. That being said, this massive power, responsibility, and versatility is often what gives the role so much hate. Junglers are expected to perform and every lane knows it. This is often why you'll hear jungle did thrown around so much. Overall, jungle is an extremely powerful role that is the best for carrying nearly every game. Just make sure that you have the mental to be constantly flamed, or make sure that you quickly find the mute all button, because that's definitely going to be needed. Even if your laners are griefing, it's still your fault, somehow. Before we continue on to the next role, we want to remind you all to check us out at ProGuides.com. We offer tons of guides and videos to help you take your gameplay to the next level. If courses and lessons aren't your thing, then don't worry. We have challenger level coaches that are available 24-7 to help you out. So, what are you waiting for? Go check us out and join the ProGuides family! Nonetheless, let's not waste any more time and dive right back into the video. Pulling us back into the video, we've got the mid lane taking our second place spot. Boasting one of the largest champ pools in the game, mid lane allows players to pick a playstyle they enjoy and use a variety of champions to carry the game. There are control mages, bruisers, assassins, marksmen, burst mages, supports, and so much more. Each of these offers a different way to carry games thanks to their unique playstyles. Support champs help their teams, assassins kill priority targets, control mages zone in fights, etc. No matter what you decide to play, mid lane probably has a role for you. And it offers two key features that allows it to carry games. These are going to be its ability to help the map and use its central location in a short lane. As a mid laner, you can kind of think of yourself as a weaker jungler. While you may not be able to constantly impact lanes and secure objectives, you work extremely well at helping your team do so. You can easily shove in waves and look to roam around the map to help your allies. Once you clear your wave, you usually have around a 30 second window to go somewhere else to help out before you have to worry about your own wave again. This means that you can set up vision to help out a side lane, or you can get aggressive vision in the enemy jungle to catch out the jungler. If you're willing to lose some CS for the enemy lags wave clear, you can extend that 30 second timer and run into another lane. Just like a jungler, you can gank, relieve pressure, or break a freeze. Even just running into the fog of war is enough to force other lanes to back up because they're afraid that you might be roaming to their lane. With your central position, it's important that you can use it to your advantage. You are the ones with easy access to all parts of the map. When vision is needed, your wave control is necessary for moving forward. During early objectives, you need to prep in order to get there before the enemy. When your jungler is invading, it's up to you to provide the pressure needed. Being in the middle of the map with a short lane means that you are the person with the fastest rotation in most cases. Be sure that you use that to your advantage. Next up, taking our number 3 spot, we've got Support. As a role, Support is often laughed at and seen as one of the lowest skilled roles in the game. While some champions in particular may not take that much skill to play, at its core, Support is very powerful and fairly complex. In high levels of play, Support is a backbone of the team as it determines vision control and can pressure the map. 
While you may not run into Core JJ during your solo queue matches, a good support can still carry a match pretty hard. With the powerful vision items at their disposal, supports are often important when it comes to properly setting up objectives and protecting their team. Having strong vision control allows teams to secure dragons and barons without worrying about the enemy flanking or having a strong TP ward. On top of this, they're able to clear the enemy's vision so that you can go ahead and get your team around the jungle and possibly get a pick. If you're playing a volatile mid lane matchup, the support can easily come mid and set up vision so you don't get ganked and lose lane. They can also help you assist in killing that laner. If you're facing a jungler like Rek'Sai or Evelyn, supports can adapt their usual wards to cover unique gank paths and spot junglers on their camps in order to predict their next play. Vision is extremely important, but support also have powerful low ecom kits at their disposal. With these kits, you're able to peel and empower allies while also disabling the enemy. Some supports even embrace the idea of them being the carry and will destroy team fights with their sheer damage. Using a supports kit to its fullest potential is what makes them powerful both in and out of lane. This is the prime reason why supports often roam when they have downtime. Since they don't need gold and their experience isn't as important, they can use their precious time to go mid for a gank or invade with their jungler. Overall, support is a role that has lost its well-deserved respect over the years, and don't underestimate how strong they can be and how easily they can carry games. Now before we move on, let's not forget about our favorite pro guide tradition. Today, we want to ask you guys, what is your least favorite role to play? Personally, I hate playing top lane. It's just, it, um, the champions up there are just not fun to go against. And if you lose, you lose really, really hard. And if you don't get any help, well, it, it's an island, so... Anyway, that's my answer and we want to hear from you. Regardless of what your answer may be, let us know in the comment section below. And let's dive right back into the video. Speaking of the top lane, we've got top lane taking our number 4 spot. As a role, top lane offers a versatile champ pool with a variety of playstyles. Sure, it may not be as diverse as mid lane or as powerful, but it's still a bit strong. In general, top lane functions as a pressure generator in one way or another and also works great as a role to round out a team composition. As a pressure generator, top laners are great at making sure their team can make plays, and if the enemy tries to punish them, they can trade something for it. This is often what's seen through as the split push your playstyle, where champions like Yorick and Fiora will take multiple turrets at once if left alone for too long. That being said, generating pressure is more than just constantly pushing. Being a powerful frontline as Orn is still great at generating pressure, allowing your team to have some space and play behind you, while also CCing the enemy and making them fearful of grouping up. Joining up the fray as a bruiser or juggernaut like Riven pressures the enemy to constantly watch you as you can annihilate the backline while also CCing the entire enemy team. Maybe you prefer the likes of Uction or Quinn, who can pressure the map with their insane roam and pick potential. Regardless of your preferred playstyle, top lane is a great way of generating some type of pressure for the team to play around. Speaking of which, your team can easily be built around you, or you can round out your team thanks to the champ pool that is offered in the top lane. If your team needs a frontline, you can opt for Malphite or Scion. If they're looking like they need more damage, you can pick up Darius. Maybe some dive and assassination needed? Well, fair enough. You can lock in Camille. Does your team need late game insurance? You can solve the problem with Kale, Vladimir, or Gangplank. There are a ton of options out there for top laners to choose from. Their power comes from the high versatility, the pressure they generate, and overall, their independence as a role. Before we continue on to the end of the video, if you want to join an amazing community of people like you that loves lists, talk pieces, and other things like this, check out our Discord using the link found in the description. What are you waiting for? Join us! Last but certainly not least, we've got ADC taking our last place spot. Now before you go typing in the comment section, let's clarify a few things. From a competitive standpoint, ADC is possibly the best role in the game and is extremely powerful. This is due to their high damage and ability to dominate teamfights thanks to items like Infinity Edge, making them hit like a truck. In solo queue, ADCs are still fairly strong once they hit 3 items. They can snowball hard and annihilate entire enemy teams with their AD damage. However, this is where being an ADC player becomes a little bit rough. As an ADC, it's your job to deal consistent DPS and take objectives quickly. You're often best at taking turrets, melting Baron, and securing dragons thanks to your damage. This is usually in exchange for being really squishy and easy to shut down. While in comp play, your entire team provides you with the support that you need to scale. The chaos of solo queue matches makes ADC hard to carry with. Sure, once you get a few items, you can dominate the game. However, sometimes your team won't let you reach that point. If the enemy Zed has 10 kills before you can finish your second item, it becomes extremely hard to carry games. Alongside this, ADC heavily relies on both the support and jungle role to protect them early on from ganks, dives, and bad wave states. In some matchups, ADCs aren't able to do much, thanks to some supports being hard counters. If you could hit your powerful item spikes every single game, honestly, you could put ADCs within the top 2 best roles to carry with. Unfortunately, with how chaotic solo queue can be, reaching your power spike can be pretty difficult. On the bright side, ADC has been in the best position that it's been for a very long time, and assassins are currently weaker than usual, which will increase your chances of carrying. And that sums up our video for today. Don't forget to join our ProGuides family at ProGuides.com.
We offer exclusive giveaways and classes you won't catch anywhere else, so stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, feel free to let me know what your role is in the comments down below and if you agree with our list. We'll see you guys in the next video. And don't forget, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.